nhliberty.org. Circumstances have arisen in which we feel we have a need of your help. Around 2006, I discovered this British World War II drama, Foils War. But it took me until about 200, uh, until about 2012 to learn the true lesson of this series. I had to sort of learn it firsthand. For those of you unfamiliar, the, the series details how a British policeman in World War II discovers he's more useful protecting Britons from the government than he is protecting them from Nazis. I didn't understand this at all back in 2001 when America went to, you know, a state of perpetual war. I thought the way that I could serve my country was to find some way of independently contributing to the war effort. I started a neighborhood watch. I built a disaster preparedness document that was keyword searchable. People could put it on their lit readers. But neither of those measures was really very effective. I don't think it made really any difference. That was my first clue that when a nation goes to war, or when there's a general crisis that's on everyone's mind, individuals tend to be a little... Well, it's hard to figure out a way to contribute to the effort, assuming the effort is even legitimate. I got another hint, a strong hint, about this phenomenon when I tried to pitch in after the Keene floods of around 2005. I went to the Red Cross and uh, well, after a bunch of paperwork filling I found that the role they wanted to put me in was also pretty useless. Now I have given blood some over the years and that was useful. And maybe that was a, a, a decent way that I was able to contribute after the 2001 situation had started. Uh, I mean, I guess like around you know well, late 2001, I I started donating a lot. But anyway, there was a final uh, crisis that convinced me uh, direct aid is not the way to go. It's better to to spend your time in a crisis protecting people from the government. All right. My idea to drive this slow. The guy in front of me is doing it. Uh, that was the uh, the 2012 Colorado Springs fire. I was there for that, and uh, I looked into doing a little bit of volunteering, and I discovered, well, if I was to volunteer as a ham operator, I'd have to jump through a, a bunch of hoops first, and that it, it, everyone that I asked, you know, if they needed any help, they were already getting help from ten people. So, it, it, especially in a crisis that's local in nature. There tends to not be a shortage, you know, if the crisis is both local and well publicized, there tends to be not a shortage of humanitarian help. This would not be the case in uh, a completely generalized disaster where you have, for instance, if the electricity were out all over the United States, then I think humanitarian aid and trade and you know, pitching in with your neighbors would become more important than protecting people from the government. I would like to know if I lived here and I wanted to get to my property, would you arrest me? But in all the situations I've ever experienced, it's been the opposite. In the Colorado Springs situation, I was useful and able to pitch in by wandering around monitoring what the government was doing. Uh, those videos went viral, and although I would have to admit the authorities tended to behave themselves fairly well during the Colorado Springs crisis, I think uh, you know keeping that spotlight on them uh, w was useful. All of them that I approached or interviewed or filmed or whatnot probably go through life, you know, remembering that and knowing that there is a chance they might have to actually explain their actions when they take actions in the future. Anyhow, so that's a lesson that took me 10 years to learn. Maybe I should share it with you so you can learn it in 10 minutes. During local crises, you are probably most useful protecting people from the government as opposed to engaging in humanitarian aid. You've got a camera, right? You've got a pipeline to YouTube, right? And you've given me permissions to use your videos, right? If not, get in touch.
And this edition of the Ridley Report was brought to you by the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, working to fight for freedom in New, in New Hampshire State House. But you know how I'm always saying that if you if you do this at the New Hampshire State House, you're gonna you're gonna hit one of the one of the New Hampshire Liberty activists. Well, uh, let's just try it and see what happens. Uh, oh, hey, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> see, it works. See, if you if you do this at the New Hampshire State House, you will hit a member of the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. This is David Lee signing off for. BidleyReport.com, sponsored by NHLiberty. You guys can say it. NHLiberty.org. No, that's not how I say it. NHLiberty.org. <laughs> All right. Thanks, not guys. Not that anymore, dog. <laughs> NHLiberty.org.